Lap, what's going on? It's Aladdin, President Airways. Ken ain't in the building. We about to do Aladdin's five first. So this how it goes down. I'm going to just throw something out there. You tell your story, whatever it is you want to say about it. Right. So let's kick it off like this. Kid Ink's first tattoo experience. First tattoo experience. I got this tattoo right here. It's like a star space design. I was really into, you know, outer space, and you know what I'm saying, and that kind of theme at that time, listening to Nerd and Pharrell and all that. And I went with my mom, man. I tricked my mom and the really wanting to get a tattoo, kind of helped her draw it, and then she went with me to get the tattoo, man, at the same time, and that was my first one. She signed the paper, and then she didn't know she signed the forever paper, and I kept going back without it. Wow, that's crazy. Man, how old were you you got the first tattoo? First tattoo, 16 years old, man. I, uh, it was supposed to be... 14, and then you know how you do with parents, where so they be like, well, wait, or no, 15, and she go, not nah, next year, not nah, next year, not nah, next year. So, you know, finally when I turned 16, I found a spot by the, around the corner from the crib, walking distance, and walked over there, man, yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see, Kid Ink's first CD album that you ever purchased. My first CD album that I ever purchased. It's crazy because my first CD album I ever purchased was in a, a collection, like, where you buy... 20 CDs for a penny. It was some like old thing and you mail it in and all that and I ended up getting like 10 CDs out of 20 and my mom got the other 10 and it was like Chronic, uh, Doggy Style, uh, The No Way Out, Puff Daddy Family, Ready to Die, Stark and Hell is Hot, uh, Method, no it wasn't that, I think that was too early for the blackout. That's about five CDs. There you go. That's cool right there. Cool, that's yeah, cool. That's All right, let's see. Kid Ink's first is first embarrassing moment. Uh, my f my first embarrassing <laughs> moment. <laughs> um, I gotta just think of a quick uh, uh, embarrassing moment from. I mean, everyone's embarrassing moment is when they fall somewhere. And I remember, you know, when you see those chain. Fences, you know, just the chain in between the two poles, and you feel like, oh, I could clear that, I could jump that. And I was at the mall, the Central City Mall, by the way, and I thought I could clear this chain, and it was about a good 400 people out there that saw <laughs> my left foot, my right foot made it, and then my left, like, big toe just clipped it, and that was face mm. first onto the, yeah. Ooh, yeah. yeah. Spill, spill gang. Spill gang. All right, spill. first artist that you looked up to that you had an opportunity to work with? Uh, man, first artist I looked up to that I got to work with was Pharrell, man. I feel mm. like in music and as a producer, a singer, rapper, everything all around, that's somebody I looked up to, and I got to work with him on this new album. Even though the songs didn't make the album, we still got them in and working on them right now and just making them perfect, and it's just dope to experience not only something that a lot of people don't get to, but something that I just really wanted to see live. and. For real making beats, man. That's dope. That's so dope, man. My mother calls him the Quincy Jones of this generation. Man. He, he's he's very is, man. talented, very Definitely. talented. So what do you do with like the al the, the cuts that don't make the album? The cuts that don't make the album, I mean, I listen to them all. Those are the ones I listen to. After the, I don't even listen to the album as much as I listen to the ones that didn't. Wow. Because, you know, those are exclusive ones that everyone else isn't playing out around you. But then right. at the same time, you know, I either figure out who else I could give them to, whether it be somebody in the team, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, if they're doing a mixtape hand a hook to one of my boys or you know see if it's anybody else outside the team you know what i'm saying other artists that i could write and produce for and just get my name out there behind the scenes a little bit more and, you know that's what i've been doing lately is just sending out all my demos i didn't use for the album to other artists and hopefully i land some stuff okay last one the first piece of advice that someone gave to you that you still take heed to today first piece of advice that somebody gave to me that i still First piece of advice I got in uh, in elementary school, I was in the third grade, and the dude told me, he was like, yo, whatever you do, ladies not gonna like you if your shoes aren't clean, so make sure you always clean your shoes. And I remember being in school, cleaning my shoes with a toothbrush, and I start cleaning the bottom. He was like, nah, bro, you don't have to clean the bottom of your shoes, but just make sure you, like the actual bottom of the shoe I was cleaning. But now nah, you just like just make sure your shoes always clean and the ladies will love you. And the ladies will love you. There it is, man. So if you know why I got the fresh kicks on, because you heard it here first with the Latin Prince of the Airways. Go ahead, plug plug the digital outlets, the album. Yeah, yeah. If you don't know, man, my new album, My Own Lane, is out right now. And you can check me out on Twitter, Kid underscore Inc., Instagram, Kid Inc., Bat Gang, Facebook, Official Kid Inc., KidIncMusic.com, all the shows. I watch your comments, I see your posts, I'm liking, I follow all that. Oh. Yeah, it is Aladdin Prince of the Airways, Kid Inc. We out. Holla!